Hello everyone and welcome back to part two of this series where I'm building my DIY one wheel. In part one of this series, I spent some time terminating this hub motor with the proper connectors. Then I connected it up to the speed controller and got the motor spinning. Then I connected the inertial measurement unit to give me feedback on the angle of the board. Using this angle feedback information, I was able to configure the speed controller to change the motor output based on the angle of the board. And finally, I added two force sensitive resistors on the foot pad so that the board won't enable the motor until I've got my foot fully on the board. The next step of building this self-balancing skateboard is to design the side rails, the enclosures, and all the other components in CAD on the computer. I want to get a good sense of how all the components are going to fit together. If you are watching this video, chances are that you have a lot of creative ideas and you like making things. I know what it's like to have a great idea but also feel overwhelmed by not knowing where to start. My goal with Bite Size is to give you the knowledge, inspiration, and confidence to make those ideas a reality. Here's the battery that I'm going to be using for this project. It's a 48 volt, 20 amp hour battery. That means that this battery has nearly one kilowatt hour of energy stored in it. This capacity should translate to a very far range for this board. There's a major drawback, however, with the selection of this battery. It's pushing the design to be a little bit bigger and bulkier than I had originally hoped for, but I guess that's a trade-off that I'm willing to make. I've got a problem here and I'm not really sure how to proceed. Um, I was able to get a lot of the measurements here off this hub motor, but there's one critical dimension that's really hard to measure based on the geometry here. And that dimension is the fork dimension. It's really the measurement between here and here. And because I can't get my tape measure or the calipers around the tire, I'm going to have to figure out a different way to measure that. It's really important that I get this measurement correct. The whole width of the board will depend on this measurement and the enclosures that I have to 3D print will all depend on this measurement. So I'd want to get it right. Unfortunately, the data sheet that came with this motor wasn't super helpful. So the first thing that I thought I would try is cutting a square in a piece of cardboard like this and holding it up to the wheel. The problem with this is that the cardboard is really flimsy and it's not very rigid and it's not giving me a good dimension. So then I tried 3D printing a template on the 3D printer, but again, I didn't really want to waste a lot of time. This isn't that rigid. So what I think I'm going to do is take the aluminum rails and drill the holes in them where they're going to go and attach both of them on both sides. And then I can measure the distance on both sides of the board and see what my measurement's going to be.
Now that I've got the right measurement for that fork width, I'm going to update the CAD model and go ahead and start 3D printing the enclosures. Once all of the 3D printed parts are done, I can start assembling this board. This portion of the video is sponsored by Altium. Altium Designer is a PCB design environment full of professional features. It really does strike that perfect balance between having professional features and being really easy to use. One of the coolest features of this software is the Altium 365 Cloud. As long as you're logged into your Altium 365 workspace, you can access, share, and open your projects on the go. This makes collaborating with others and having them review your designs super easy. If you're ready to take your PCB design to the next level, I would highly recommend checking out Altium Designer. Supporting sponsors like Altium is a great way to support this channel. When you use the link in the description, you can get a free trial of Altium Designer plus a 30% discount if you decide to purchase a license. I have really appreciated working with Altium as a sponsor on this channel, and it would be really cool if you took a second to see what they have to offer. 
I've got the frame roughly assembled together for the very first time and this is looking really awesome. I still have to print the platform that all the electronics get mounted to, but I'm way too excited to wait for that to finish printing before testing this out. So I've got the battery connected, I've got all the electronics just loosely floating around inside, and I'm gonna turn it on for the very first time to see if this works. One thing I'll have to do before I do this test is disable the foot pads because I don't have them connected yet and I don't wanna have to connect them up to run this test. So I'm gonna turn this on and connect it to the computer and disable those foot pads. Okay, now that I've got that disabled, let's give this a shot. Here we go. Awesome, that is so cool. So I'll need to change one setting here. I didn't know which direction this IMU would be facing, so I need to rotate it 90 degrees in the software so that it's tipping the right direction. This was my very first attempt at riding the self-balancing skateboard. As you can see, it's way too sloppy and requires me to lean way too far forward to get it to go. I was able to solve this by adjusting some of the parameters in the configuration software. Once I had the tuning parameters dialed in so that I could ride it somewhat, it was time to install the lights, the bumpers, and the foot pads on the board.
The next video that I make will be the final video in this series. I'm going to sum up my entire experience building a self-balancing skateboard. That's going to include talking about the cost, all of the effort, the tools that were required, and all of the improvements that I plan to make in the future. I've had lots of people express interest in building their own, and if I get enough interest, I will release a set of plans along with guidelines and tips and suggestions on how to make your own self-balancing skateboard. Everything that I have learned while building this project will be included in a PDF that will be available for purchase on my website. Hopefully this project video showed you how to take a complex idea and break it down into more manageable parts. I'd recommend watching one of the suggested videos that I'll put here at the end. You should also subscribe to Bite Size and consider becoming a supporting member through Patreon or YouTube memberships. Supporting members get access to behind the scenes content, early release videos, and monthly hangouts. I recently set up a Discord server for Bite Size supporting members. I would love to connect with all of you guys on a more personal level and hear what you're working on. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.